Welcome to the first Sunday of Advent. It seems so strange that here we are in Advent when we began our uh, lockdown life ready for Mother's Day. I find it very difficult to believe that the whole of the rest of the church year has slipped away from us and here we are beginning again. So welcome to Advent and our season of preparation. Patty will lead us in worship this weekend and I have chosen hope, that first theme of the weeks of Advent to uh, bring us into the change from the last weeks of the last church year into the first weeks of this church year, the year in which we'll hear the Gospel of Mark. Our worship is still online this week and next week you will be, I know, delighted to know that we will be able to be back in our buildings. Um, we don't have updated material from the Church of England yet. We anticipate that uh, probably Monday night late or Tuesday because the rules don't come in until Wednesday. So we are learning to wait until the last minute. But we do not anticipate any hesitation in being reopened for worship from Sunday the 6th of December, Advent 2. So you can light your candles and open your little windows and advent calendars this weekend and next weekend we will be lighting our candles in church for advent. Uh, our notices this week are partly about that then. So St Mark and St Cuthbert's you are welcome to the service at 9.30 or 11.15 whichever you prefer. At St Peter's you, if you were regularly in worship while we were open between lockdowns, then you should have your worship card with dates through until December. And so please come along to the one which matches. So if you've still got it, then uh, come along to either the 6th or the 13th, depending on which group you were. If you have never been before and would like to join us, you are very welcome. If you didn't come back before but want to do now and so don't have a worship card with a, a choice of groups um, it's helpful if you let us know but you if you just turn up we will find a magic chair for you if you're in a St Peter's group and you want to sneak along to St Cuthbert's instead you are very welcome to do so so we will see many of you back in church next Sunday Sunday the 6th Advent 2 so there will be worship, Advent 2, Advent 3, Advent 4. When we get to Christmas, we're still working that out, but there will be information about Christmas itself coming over the next week or so. That's worship. Most of all our, or all of our extra services for Christmas will still be online or on the phone. I think we are not quite yet ready to uh, take the risk to be able to bring them back in the building, especially when we know that many, many people want to be in and the buildings aren't COVID secure numbers big enough to take that. Cross your fingers for the weather because we might have something outside planned for us to worship together. But our carol services so that we can sing along at home, our nativity um, and uh, what else will we do? Chris Dingle will be online. Those are in the process of being recorded at the moment. There's no way of trying to bring those in-house, no matter what the tiers or lockdown are. So you'll be able to watch along, listen along to those from home. Other things, there will be the possibility for some events. So we've had a word with the council. We do think that we can have a fair. We probably won't do that at St Mark's the Cuthberts because people come along to sit together and listen and chat and talk to each other. That's not the point of the um, of the allowance to be together so that's probably not a clever idea but at St Peter's we can do that outside so our plan and some of you will have a save the date card our plan is for us to have an outside Christmas market at St Peter's on the 12th of December so exciting the cat's terribly excited by it she's already cheering for it because she's outside in the cold if you've got flyers, then uh, do tell your friends because it looks like this will go ahead. If you'd like some flyers to pass around your friend, you are welcome. We have spare. I have some at the vicarage and we have some in church. We also have some spare of the worship online or by phone details. So if you'd like to put both of them through a letterbox, especially if you are delivering Christmas cards to your neighbours or friends, please ask 
grabs them, hand them out. You'll be very welcome to do so. If you have, and it's so that will be for the 12th, so it's not that far ahead. And if you have got things that you would like to donate for the hamper raffles, then you're very welcome to get in touch with us about that. Most other things in terms of stalls uh, are organised. If you want to volunteer to help or to steward so we can make sure our one-way system works, then of course that will be gratefully received. Jean Stokes is in charge of the fair. At the fair there will also be raffle tickets. Thank you so much for those people who've already returned raffle ticket stubs and money. If you want to give us a cheque for those, the treasurers would appreciate them being um, as the bank accounts are, which are St Mark and St Cuthbert Church, for St Mark and St Cuthbert, and for St Peter's, Harton St Peter PCC. Harton St Peter PCC. Um, if your cheque says that, if you want to write us a cheque, then that makes it much easier for Colin not to have to persuade the people at Barclays to accept the cheque. There are more tickets available, uh, both pink and green. And so if you have already sold your 10 and you'd like some more, there's no limit. Please do ask. We can furnish you with some more for both churches. And there's no need for you only to sell one colour. If you'd like to sell both colours, you can. Uh, postcards, checks, uh, things. <laughs> That's everything. I've got a short set of news today. Our news will continue. We might well switch to issuing the news separately so that it doesn't have to wait and tie up with the worship. Bill is doing an amazing job at getting the worship recorded quite early uh, and then we wait for the news until the end. So we may begin to split the news and the worship. The news will still come out at the weekend on our MailChimp. If you're not signed up to our email list and you have an email, please do. It's only once a week because I haven't got any time to be able to send out more than once a week. So the people who've managed to unsubscribe themselves calling me spam, I'm offended. Um, but please do use that as a way to find out what's going on. The websites and social media will be updated with all of the dates and the times for you to watch the Christmas, the Advent and Christmas activities coming soon as we are back in our building. What a way to celebrate the beginning of Advent as we start to look forward to the coming of Christmas and the Incarnation. We are also using our Advent to prepare for the coming of our King, the coming of our Lord for the second time. And will he find us watching and waiting? Will he find us alert and active in his service? We hope so. So wherever you are joining us from, you are warmly welcome to Harton and Clean Park, where Patty leads us in worship this week. Have a great first week of Advent. But however the tears come back in from lockdown, do be careful, stay safe and be blessed. Enjoy the week. Welcome to our Sunday evening service from the churches of Harton and Clean Park. Whether you join us regularly or if this is your first time, you are all most welcome. Come and worship with us on this first Sunday in the season of Advent.
watch at all times, praying for the strength to stand with confidence before the Son of Man. Grace and peace to you from God. May he fill us with truth and joy. We come together as the family of God to offer him praise and thanksgiving. Hear and receive his holy word and bring before him the needs of the world. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Keep awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Amen. Come soon, Lord Jesus. Jesus is the light of the world, a light no darkness can ever put out. Light a candle bright and tall for the hope within our world. Hope that at the ages call as the stars and planets world shine within our hearts today. Come, O oh hope, to us we pray. Almighty God, as your kingdom dawns, Turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness, that we may be ready to meet you in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name with all the angels in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A voice cries out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord. So let us take heed and turn to the Lord in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 130 out of the depths I have called to you, Lord. Let your ears be open to hear my voice. My hope is in God's word. If you recorded all our sins, who would come before you? My hope is in God's word. There is forgiveness with you. Therefore, you shall be feared. My hope is in God's word. My soul is longing for the Lord more than those who watch for daybreak. My hope is in God's word. O Israel, wait for the Lord, 
for with the Lord there is mercy. My hope is in God's word. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. My hope is in God's word. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when the fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When we did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past no one had heard, no ear had perceived, no eye had seen any gods besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned, because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls your name, or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have delivered us into the hand of your iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay. You are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not exceedingly be angry, O Lord. Do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Your word is a lantern to our feet. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Your word is a lantern to our feet. Alleluia, alleluia. I have told you this before it occurs, says the Lord, so that when it does occur, you may believe. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus said to Peter, James, John and Andrew, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, 
and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Welcome to Advent, the season of preparation. We're at the beginning of a new church year, and Advent is a season in which we watch and wait. Usually it's a season of preparation for Christmas, and people are rushing around, buying presents, organising food, drawing up a military precise schedule for cooking, writing Christmas letters, squeezing in nights out with work, family, friends. It's often, for lots of people, a season of frenetic activity in its preparation. And it's easy for us to recognise this and recognise the busyness as somehow wrong. Easier, of course, to recognise it than necessarily to do anything about it. But then to struggle to reclaim Advent as a quiet time, that time of patient waiting. But is it patient waiting? What is our preparation? What is our preparation for? For the coming of Jesus. Advent is not really the season of preparation for Christmas, although it allows us to remember the hope inherent in the Incarnation, Jesus being born into our world in human form at Christmas. Advent is our reminder to prepare for the coming of Jesus when he returns to take all things to himself, to find out what we have done with the talents entrusted to us, to divide out the sheep from the goats. So this should make us think carefully about our preparation for that day, not just Christmas Day and Christmas. Should we find time among the frenetic activity to be still and do nothing? This year, of course, we have lots more time to sit and do nothing than usually. Or does Advent, in fact, encourage us to activity as much as to quiet? It certainly encourages us to reflect, yes, to reflect on who we are and how we are and how ready we are for the coming of the King. Two weeks ago, Stan reminded us that we are challenged to grow in creativity and responsibility. With that same exhortation that we hear in Mark today, to keep awake and watchful for when the Master returns. Keep alert an active waiting, being conscious of our surroundings and responding to need. Think those who trimmed their wicks and ensured a stockpile supply of oil. Others may slumber, but we must grow and develop and put in some investment and commitment in our challenge to grow more like Jesus, to grow into God. If that investment, said Bill last week, is in the kingdom of God, then that can't be a bad thing. The parable of the sheep and the goats, as we learn from the wise nun, reveals the truth that how we try to feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit those in prison, care for those in need, we are all at best good goats, because there are so many times that we fail. Our challenge is to be more alert, awake to need around us, and what gifts we have to use in response. To be more conscious of living our lives as Jesus would. Not just sometimes, but all the time. Love that is actively given and giving. Cornel West said, Never forget that justice what love looks like in public. There is introspection in Advent, but perhaps not so much as in Lent. John the Baptist will call us back to the straight path that we have so likely humanly veered from, skipping as a goat, or my smallest cat, is wont to do, after something more exciting or dangerous off-piste. Our collect, 
Our prayer this week calls us to turn us from the darkness of sin to the light of holiness that we may be ready to meet you. Our preparation in Advent is to reflect on how we live out the love that we receive from God, what that looks like in public for us. In Corinthians, we hear that we are not lacking in any spiritual gift as we wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. The question is, what do we do with them? In Advent, we hear over and over those amazing words of Isaiah. And he rarely tells us to just sit still and pray. It is Isaiah who urges us to pray actively, to seek, to build a world where the captives are freed and the hungry fed. Love in action. We move into a year reading the Gospel of Mark and he segues seamlessly from the apocalyptic readings of the last few weeks into his year with the passage we hear today about the trials and tribulations which will precede the coming of the Son of Man. And yet it is not doom and gloom, for after that suffering, after those days of torment and insurrection, if we are awake and watchful, we shall see the Son of Man coming with great power and glory. And God will, as Isaiah put it, come to meet those who gladly do right and those who remember you in your ways. Within our trials and tribulations, and perhaps we especially need to hear it in our present trials and tribulations, Advent repeats to us the promise that one day all crying and pain and mourning will be wiped away and there will be a new heaven and a new earth. And that if we commit ourselves to God, to accepting his love, being changed by it and actively loving in his name, that we will be strengthened, strengthened to the end. God is faithful and we are called by him into the fellowship of his son. This is the hope that we hold in difficult times. The four weeks of Advent divide into themes. Hope is this first week. Even in darkness, there is the promise of a new dawn. Psalm 139 says, The darkness is no darkness with you. Hope is light in the darkness. When God sits with us, sometimes bringing light quietly and softly into our darkness and sometimes blindingly or suddenly. We are watchful and alert to see where the light shines in the darkness. For it does somewhere even the tiniest pinprick, and the darkness can never overcome it. If we trust in the God who loves us so much that he sent his son to live with us and die for us, who taught us how to live showing that love in action, who will return one day and take us to himself, then there is no darkness with him. In this is our hope. No matter how the world looks, there is comfort in knowing this, in trusting this, in living this, and in that, there can always be joy. There remains our challenge too. O Lord our God, make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise. Amen. The Lord will come and not be slow, his footsteps cannot Before him righteousness shall go, his royal harbinger. Truth from the earth like to a flower shall God and blossom blend, and just
We say together in faith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain, for with his blood he purchased us for God, from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Be alert and watchful. Keep yourselves ready. As we begin a new year in the life of the Church, let us pray together to the God of our making. Holy God, just as we are, we come to you and ask your kingdom to come in us, especially in these difficult times. Be known to us in your church. Fill us with your presence that we may proclaim your peace. Help us to reveal your glory in all the world, especially for those who walk in darkness. Father, Increase our faith and our love for you so that we may become the lights in the darkness that we are called to be. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Holy God, the signs in our world of hate, distrust and greed are shown to us clearly every day. Give peace to your world. Disperse the clouds of war and violence, of calamity and disaster. Let your power and your glory be revealed to the nations. We pray for the police, hospital workers, ambulance workers, firefighters and all working to beat this pandemic. Father, may we see with your eyes the signs of hope and victory, the opportunity for loving service, for encouragement, reassurance and thanksgiving. Lord, hear us. 
Lord, graciously hear us. Holy God, bless the parenting and befriending in all our relationships and increase our love for one another. Be known in our homes that they may reflect your love in our workplaces that they may reflect your glory. Make us fully aware of each other's presence. Father, make us fully aware of others and sensitive to their needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Holy God, we bring to you in love those who are weary with ongoing pain and weakness those who are frail with age, all who are vulnerable. We pray for all who care for them at home or in hospital. Father, pour your living strength into the lives of all in need and into the lives of all who care for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Holy God, we pray for all who have come to the end of their earthly life and for those whose lives feel empty without them. Among the recently departed, we remember Audrey Baglin. May they now rejoice in the fullness of your presence and your glory. We also remember those whose year's mind falls at this time. Jackie Mitchison. Father, give comfort to the bereaved and everlasting peace to all who rest in your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Holy God, your faithful care has brought us safely to this moment. We thank you for your constant love, forgiveness, strength and protection. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God the Father, Judge, All-Merciful, make us worthy of a place in his kingdom. Amen. May God the Son, coming among us in power, reveal in our midst the promise of his glory. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit make us steadfast in faith, joyful in hope and constant in love. Amen. As we await our coming Saviour, let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you.